Sister M. Johanna Brandstetter was born into a staunch Catholic farming family of Mr. Johan and Mrs. Thresia Brandstetter on 21st February 1922 in Obergrünberg, Austria. She was baptized Maria but was fondly called Mariedel by her family. She has had much of a positive influence on her 11 siblings of whom she is the second eldest. Mary Adel felt close to her grandpa during her early childhood but after his death she grew closer to her mother. As Mary Adel's mother sent her to the school on the first day she felt terribly homesick for her. She searched for her mother's footprints in the wet mud on her way back from school. It is this deep longing for her mother which later transformed into a still greater longing for God. Mary Adel cherished an inner desire since her childhood to be a missionary in the land of the rising sun and for her this land was India. Her fascination for India was born out of the facts and ideas she had picked up by reading several books on the multifaceted culture thriving there besides the challenge involved in working as a missionary in this exotic land. At the age of 20 in the year 1942 amidst the turbulent times under the Nazi regime Mariedel offered her vow of perpetual virginity to the Lord during a mass celebrated at her request by her spiritual director on the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus She then felt that she belonged to God who was all loving as well as all powerful against all evil forces The Holy Eucharist stood at the very center of her life and that of her family right from the beginning. With the Nazi horrors behind her after the culmination of the war in 1945, she continued the pursuit of her dream. She was led as divine providence would have it by her spiritual guide and her aunt Maria to the congregation of the Sisters of the Mercy of the Holy Cross which had a mission in India since 1894. Mary Adel bid a tearful adieu to her siblings all of whom were closely bonded to her and her dear parents. At the age of 23 she joined the Holy Cross Provincial House at Linz Upper Austria on 22nd August 1945. On 21st August Mary Adel entered into novitiate during which she seemed to gain the paradise of the intimate communion with God. Mary Adel made her first profession on 23rd August 1951. and took the name sister M Johanna after the beloved disciple of Jesus she accepted her first assignment to be the class teacher of the primary school in Hopschul she was proficient at her ministry as a teacher always considering her classes a teaching learning process the prophetic intuition and the pull towards the mission in the land of the rising sun india became reality on 27th March 1955 when suddenly she was granted the visa this marked the beginning of a faith journey by sea to india she reached betaya on august 30th 1955 and assumed the responsibility of teaching english and religion to the students of the girls high school in betaya town while in betaya sister johanna fulfilled every one of her responsibilities by drawing inspiration from the two choices sayings of our founders totally to the crucified therefore totally to the neighbor and the need of the time is the will of god by father theodosius florentini these foundational experiences of our founders have remained the most important guiding principles behind her actions all her life To answer the needs of the given time sister Johanna firmly believed that she needs to walk an extra mile and be visionary like the founder she did ordinary things in an extraordinary way which remains a challenge to us even today she furthered formal education and classroom teaching 
to non-formal types of education like functional literacy program for the illiterate women and other developmental works. A missionary in the true sense of the word, she didn't spare herself the trouble of meeting people during her home leave to motivate them to contribute to the mission fund which she used for her ministry in India. As a young vibrant sister, on 23rd May 1957, she left Betea for Kolein to assume another challenging new assignment as the headmistress of the school. Seeing the deprivation and poverty of the people around, she realized that government recognition and aid was necessary to run the school. She then tirelessly worked in this direction. Her enormous efforts finally paid off when the school was awarded the government recognition in 1957 with the Adivasi students gaining advantage with stipends and scholarships from the government. Thanks to her love for the Adivasi's deep trust and enduring spirit. Sister M. Johanna Brastager made her final vows on August 23, 1957. With this impetus of completely belonging to the Lord Sister Johanna, known to all as the fire engine because of the energy and zeal she exuberated in her mission, moved on. While preparing the young couple for marriage in Kaling, she came face to face with the plight of the young girls who were illiterate and mostly unskilled. The fact that these girls would soon be mothers and hence the first teachers of their kids unsettled her. Therefore, Sister Johanna, in response to the need of the time and being motivated by the Bishop Oscar Serin S.J. of Raigha, Ambigapur Diocese, conceived the idea of the future Grihini School, which at the time of its inception began as a small institution, but later grew to the magnitude of a movement spreading far and wide within and across the diocese, enabling hundreds of young women to become good homemakers. She also witnessed the building of the new high school at Colling and worked hard together with her sisters to establish it. She woke up with another new dream, to solve the problem of the lack of trained teachers in Madhya Pradesh. Sister Johanna, appealed to the Mother House for a Teacher's Training Institute through the then Mission Superior, Mother Angelica, under whom she was a counselor from May 5, 1961. This appeal was considered favorably and the much-needed Teacher's Training Institute, including the hostel accommodation, was erected. On 29th November, Sister Johanna reached her new destination, Ambigapur, to join the pioneer of the mission, Sister Geraldina Kroyha. While in Ambikapur, she wrote many appeals for financial aid to Europe to procure funds to purchase land and for the construction of the school building there. Having completed her challenging mission to North India, she began her journey to South India. Sister Johanna, with the help of Father Frank Meneses, CSSR, zeroed in on a plot close to the Redemptorist Novitiate and the famous Holy Ghost Church in Davis Road, Bangalore, which was to serve as a center to recruit girls and to promote vocations to the congregation. In 1973, she received permission from the Mother House to purchase a house, which has now become the Provincial House of the Holy Cross Sisters of the South Province and for which we owe much to her. Her arrival at West India in Maharashtra state marked another great episode in the life of Sister Johanna. She reached Kalyan on 17 June 1976 and got involved in the parish Vincent de Paul Society in Kalyan, through which she visited many deprived families and so much spiritual and physical misery. She took up this arduous endeavor with great love and determination. On 25th January 1977, Sister Johanna, along with Sister Preeti Nag and Sister Tara Minj, left Kalyan in a truck with her belongings for Nanbat. There, she realized the immediate need to aid the impoverished all Catholic community. For them, 
she built community centers in the villages to promote family welfare she took up the task to awaken this old christian community and also the responsibility of evangelizing other communities on 3rd june 1979 the convent in nanbad named as the holy cross community ashram was built and inaugurated from there she pioneered the mission in mercus in south bisain and started a kindergarten for catholics and adivasi settlers on 14 march 1980 the foundation stone was laid for the mercus convent by sister julia erni an observant and far sighted visionary that she has been she always felt the need for more vocations to further god's kingdom and tirelessly worked in this regard Most of her sisters owe our gratitude to her for this. Sister Johanna was appointed the regional superior of Madhya Pradesh on 12th February 1984. She efficiently carried out her term of office by her good rapport with the sisters and their collaboration. When Mother Gertrude and Sister Jocelyn passed through Bombay on 22nd January 1985, Father Bernard Bandari parish priest of Bayanda spoke to them about his desire to have her sisters work in his parish sister johanna rented a flat for our sisters where they could stay while teaching in the diocesan school of our lady of nazareth this ministry is continued even today along with this social welfare work was given priority on 23 january 1990 During the tenure of Mr V P Singh the then prime minister of India sister Johanna was promised Indian citizenship much to her joy and surprise this certainly came as a relieving news to sister Johanna after the turmoil she had to face with the expulsion orders that she received twice with Indian citizenship being granted to her her long standing dream to belong to the land of the rising sun had finally come true she no longer was a foreigner but a daughter of this most exotic land sister johanna then learned that the catholics of mira road were particular about having an english medium school for their kids sister johanna fulfilled this dream of the people by starting a school over there today it has become one of the most sought after institutions in the locality Sister Johanna was part of the Porta Charismatic Outreach Ministry in Germany and Austria with Father Matthew Nikom Parambil the director of Porta Retreat Center at Mirinyo in Kerala She rendered her service there as a translator of English language to German Sister Johanna was associated with the mission in Goa right from the latter part of her stay in Mira Road She kept contact in writing and in person in connection with the gift deed according to which an ancestral house of the Guerra family at Tivim was being gifted to the Holy Cross sisters. Eventually her efforts bore fruit and as planned the formation house for candidates was inaugurated. In the meantime while visiting the parishes in Goa She was also constantly on the lookout for the poorest parish in South Goa. She came across Tilamola and Ambulim parishes out of which she along with the sisters opted for the latter which even though poor had a great scope for evangelization. Sister Johanna known for her passion for evangelization took keen interest in teaching the Catholic faith to the farmers to the domestic staff and anyone whom she felt needed to know Jesus and the Catholic faith at Kothanur she always longed for unity among all the denominations of Christianity she planned a prayer meet with South Asian Bible College and Ebenezer Hospital in Kothanur and joined the same with the intent to promote ecumenism she was never complacent with whatever she was doing for the proclamation of the gospel therefore She wrote a very short life history of Jesus which could be read at a stretch of 30 minutes. In 2011, with a burning desire for evangelization, Sister Joanna came up with a small pocket booklet named Important Events in the Life of Jesus of Nazareth. 
initially written in english she translated it into german eventually this booklet was translated into hindi tamil and marathi sister m johanna herself a precious gift of god to our congregation has further enriched us by inspiring and promoting three of her younger sisters sister bernarda sister ignacia and sister elizabeth to our congregation while sister bernarda and sister ignacia who contributed much to the indian mission are in their eternal bliss sister elizabeth who is 15 years younger to sister johanna is in their home province lens in austria after serving indian mission for many years 23rd August 2011 the diamond jubilee of her religious life was celebrated her joy was doubled by the presence of her beloved family members for few god has granted long life her life as a nonagenarian was celebrated with a meaningful prayer service and liturgy which was attended by all the superiors of the south province along with her niece professor dr veronica and her family from switzerland on 21st february 2012 Sister Joanna's 99th birthday and 70th year of the profession was celebrated in Kothanur on 21st February 2021 in a simple manner due to covid restrictions. Sister Joanna was very happy and enjoyed the day as all the families and sisters prayed for her besides actively participating in the colorful cultural programs arranged in her honor that day. These are but few out of the many milestones in the life of Sister M Johanna whose life has been a large as large as our institution itself and is an inspiration to all of us in responding to the will of God in the need of the time Each language distance never stopped you dear Sister Johanna from traveling from north to south and east to west you did everything to elevate every human need a true daughter of a visionary founder Dear sister as we cross yet another milestone of your centenary birthday today we greet you once again with the warmest affection and deepest sense of gratitude may the lord who has carried you beyond your 10th decade keep you in his love peace and joy in the years to come